Hello everyone, this is Robert Ferguson and I am seriously excited, seriously, like in a big way, times 20, and delighted to uh, be having a candid conversation with a woman who is on a mission. Uh, she's a partner, a Diet for Life coach. Uh, she's encouraging people to live clean uh, in many aspects of that meaning. And uh, we're gonna talk about excess fat. We're gonna talk about how it's related to breast cancer, various cancers, and how you can get rid of excess fat. So without further mm -hmm. delay, here she is, the one and only Trish C. <laughs> well, thank you very much for that introduction. Trish C, that's right. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Can you enunciate for everyone how to say your last name? Right, it's Italian, so it's Craparotta. Okay. But if you had an Italian accent, it'd be Craparotta. Okay, well, I will, I will work on that, and the day will come <laughs> where I will not cop out and go with Trish C. Uh, Trish C's okay, too. <laughs> okay. Now, okay, uh, to start off with, share with us, like, where are you located? And like, what is the day-to-day -day in the life of Trish as it pertains to helping people? Well, I am from Barrie, Ontario, Canada, which is about an hour north of Toronto. So almost in Northern Canada, but not quite. So it is an awesome location. It's between the cottage country and the city. So it's a perfect location to be in. So, and um, I work full-time right now at a telecommunications company called Telus. I know all about Telus. That's right. So I am, the, if you got anything wrong with your phone and your bill and whatnot, and you call me, I help you out. That's what I do. So I sit all day long which is not good for me at my age, but uh, I, um, so that's just my day job. So my other job I do is to help people get back on track with their health and I, in a big way. I do it really effectively, I think on Facebook by sharing different uh, things that I do about food and nutrition and also teaching, you know, just showing people examples of what I do um, on a day-to-day -day basis to, to do that. So I don't hide anything I'm doing. I think it's really important for people to get the idea and the knowledge, because we're all confused about what is supposed to be healthy, what's not to be, and <laughs> wow, is it ever a noisy world out there? So hopefully what I'm doing is instilling that uh, in them to show them that this particular lifestyle I've chosen to do is a lifestyle. It's not just a, a temporary thing. It is actually effective lifestyle that's helping me stay on track with my health so I don't have a reoccurrence of breast cancer as well. So super excited. About that. Nice. And, and as a coach, you guys, so Trish is a Die for Life coach and she can help you one-on-one -on -one in groups and just a good person to connect with. And you know what, Trish, I'm, I'm excited for a lot of reasons, but one of them is when I first connected with you and I would watch your lives and I would see how you communicated with people. You could see you have a ton of empathy and compassion. It was very apparent that you saw the value in what we're doing and you're on a mission to be fully equipped to be able to give people more. Sure, uh, yeah. So in your opinion, you know, what do you like most about Diet for Life and what are you liking most about the principles you're able to help and share with other people? Well, it's gonna sound really simple, but the, for me, when I had, when I went through breast cancer in my treatment, the biggest thing that I knew I had to do is rebuild my body. It was, it was done, my body was, done after treatment and surgeries and whatnot i really had a dead body so for me i knew it was important that i didn't want any more medication i didn't want any more th stuff in my body i really had to learn how to put things in my face and my body to rebuild it without the medication because it was like i had so much i was radioactive pretty much after all that <laughs> so i knew that nutrition was my only way that i should go do that so i did all of my own research like everybody else found a couple of really good people out there that talked about gut health and things like that. So I was able to really hone in on that and, and do that. But I knew it wasn't a lifestyle for me. Like there, there's no way to sustain that. Some people can, but I can't believe people would do that, you know, cause it's very restrictive as far as when you're building your gut health right. and your insides better to, to get your cells going and all of that stuff so that you can actually live a normal life. So I did that. It was intense, but I knew it wasn't something I could sustain. And then, of course you get complacent and then you get you know off on the wrong track again so this is a very good example of me going doing really well and then just going back to old habits again because i thought you know what i 
I beat breast cancer, so I'm going to have my cake and eat it too, literally. <laughs> and I started packing on weight again. And I sit all day for my job. So I knew I was in trouble again. So I thought, oh, how, how dare me? <laughs> and so I started looking into, again, my mind about what's healthy, what's not healthy, the same as everybody else's. You know, what's bad, what's good. It's all our own perceptions based on our beliefs and what we're taught and what we see out there, which is a lot of noise. So I, w I w approached it in a different way to say, okay, I need to find something that's healthy, that's good for my body, that works, that makes sense, that's simple. And then I started taking these supplements, like the trim and the biocell, and then I found you. I'm going, you were the connection to me. I'm going like, I saw you at the convention, and I'm going like, well, who is this guy? Like, come on. So I did more research on you. My research <laughs> on you. <laughs> I researched you. <laughs> going, who is this guy all about? What's he all about? And I was like blown away. So I joined the group right away, and the simplicity of, it's, you know, you know those, um, those, those, those uh, coconuts? where you put the ball under it and you kind of shake it around like that. Well, this whole methodology about just taking what you already love to eat and just making some changes so it works for you kind of reminds me of those coconuts, right? When you move one around the other one and they, it works. Right. So I, had, I, had, I really had, that's as simple as it. Take what you like, figure out how to put it together so that it works with your body and that will keep you, your, fat, your body in fat burning mode. So, for me, it was like too simple. It was just like, how come I never heard about this before? Like, is this for real? And it works for any culture. Like I, I tried to poke holes in it all day long. Like I tried to find this, this can't be true. There's no way this can't be true. And then when I, when I did it myself and incorporated all that, I was a happy girl. I could wake up every day or it doesn't matter where I was or where I, where, what I was eating or at work or not at work or out with friends. I no longer had to think about because you know how we feel really bad about food. Mm -hmm. We've it's pretty sad, right? It's pretty sad that we all feel bad about food. We're always looking for well, we shouldn't have that, and that's bad. Like food to me is a big celebration. I through my breast cancer and recovery, I had to keep my mind busy, so I actually cooked. I took every fancy recipe out there. I became the Julie Child <laughs> of the 21st century, and I just cooked my way through my recovery, which is really cool. So my passion for food really comes from there. I haven't ever let that go. And I love cultural differences and foods like that. So for this, is it's a very simple process of just taking what you like, pairing it properly so that it works with your body in a way that, that wards off the fat that prevents the cancer. Kind of sounds like a Dr. Seuss kind of thing, but that's really, for me, that's what it was. Well, you know, it's, uh, it's interesting what you're saying from the standpoint of you get it. And that's because you took responsibility for your own health and you went out there and researched it. And then when we did connect and you looked into it, you're looking at it from a whole different perspective than say someone who runs a corporation. Right. Uh, you know what I mean? Or someone who oversees or influences a lot of people, they're looking at the data, they're looking at the numbers. And oftentimes they looked at this methodology because they didn't create it or it wasn't their idea, a lot of times these types of people will see the complexity and not the simplicity. Mm -hmm. Well, they'll, you know what I mean? They'll over, yeah. because this has been my challenge for over 20 years, yeah. is that it's so simple that the Ivy Leaguers of the world will look at it and go, well, it can't be that simple because I would have known about it or I would have created it. Right. <laughs> Right. If it doesn't have shackles and chains, it can't be true, right? Because yeah. that's really what that that's really what it is. Yeah, it's uh, it's very interesting, and so that's where I think like minds come together. Yeah, I agree. We are on a, a mission to know that look, you can't live your healthiest life uh, with a disjointed approach, right? So yep. if you're only selling supplements, right? Yep. And there's no guidance around how you move as far as fitness, exercise how you eat if it's disjointed yeah so now you're you're leaving some it's 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 kind of like I'll, I'll give you a quick example okay. um, in 2005 there was this billionaire that owns this company called dole foods and uh, fruits and vegetables yeah and he partnered with this uh, uh, insurance company anthem in the states is pretty popular and they created this this institute uh, originally i think it was a like california well-being institute and i was one of the first people uh, I think I was the first person they hired to create programs for them. And the idea was that people would come to this billion dollar facility 
and they would get access to the mental side of things, psychology. They would get access to the fitness and movement and exercise. They would get access to nutrition and how to cook. And, and all those things together is going to put them on the road to living their, their best, their healthiest life. Makes total sense, right? Yeah, total sense. So I'm in the room with them, and I'm sharing with them that this is not going to work, you guys. And the reason why it's not going to work is because way down on the other side is the psych colleges, counselors, that world. Way over there, you got the kitchen and nutritionists and that world. And way down there, you got the fitness. They don't even agree. So yeah. how are we going to have the glue, you know what I mean, to, yeah. to fully impact that person? Because the person running the fitness gym, maybe they're in the keto. Right. And the person running the kitchen, they're trying to show them how to eat like everything. <laughs> yeah. You see what I mean? So it's like oh, I work in corporate. I, it totally sounds like yeah. They just join the, There's too many hands in the soup, and no one's talking to each other. Yes, which is we're on the same or on the same page. Which is a big, big problem. And at that level, then you have egos, and well, my way of eating is better than yours, and it becomes a, a political, religious debate, and mm -hmm. nothing positive comes out of it. Uh, I experience it all the time. I'm experiencing yeah. it right now. Um, I see it all the time. So think about the average person. So my mom, like you, you know, her first experience with breast cancer, uh, they sent her to a nutritionist and then another one. And one said that tofu was fine and the other one was totally against tofu. And at that point, it was like, mom, I'm on my way. You know what I mean? So yeah. the average person don't have access to clarity with a good resource. They're, you know, left to you know, the, the influence and personal opinions of these individual professionals, which is absolutely horrible. So Yeah, it's dangerous. It really is dangerous. The people we put our trust in every day don't know any more than they know. So they're never going to – I'll tell you a little story. My mom, God love her, she was this little tiny woman about this big, and uh, she had bought a lot of punch. So she was in a situation, too, before she passed, and she had uh, – been diagnosed with lymphoma so blood cancer blood she didn't last very long but she was told you know you need to lose weight because she was tiny to begin with but go see a dietitian right and she had no filters my mother had like zero filters <laughs> so she will come home going like how am I supposed to listen to her when she's 300 pounds and she's trying to tell me how to eat properly like literally no filters right so and you had mentioned that the other day that you know if you're in the health business or you're in the other side in that field long enough and you're not doing something about your own situation, how are you supposed to have that impact on the person you're trying to help? Exactly. But my mother is a perfect example of that. Like she just told people what she thought, had no filters, but I agree with her in that, in that case for sure. Yeah, but so. it's difficult because those people are just regurgitating what they know and they don't really don't truly believe in their heart yes. that it, they're actually helping somebody it's just like you're educated you got the degree you're sitting at the desk and you're doing your stuff but that has no impact on anybody you're just regurgitating what you know but there's no connection and no evidence and no passion there it's just you know you're sitting in front of someone else telling you what to do and how to do it and yeah they got no connection either so yeah it's really sad and and, and yeah, so let's, let's talk about excess fat because yeah as you know, um, excess fat is 100% associated with various cancers. Uh, I believe the CDC, I read the other day, they said that 40% of all cancers are associated with excess fat. And yeah. I've been sharing, uh, based on data I had, that uh, 30%. So now you're up, upward to 40% of wow. all cancers are associated with excess fat. 70% of Breast cancer is associated with excess fat. Jeez. And so, yes, environment plays a role and genetics play a role. Sure. But there's about 40%. And I get this data from an oncologist who's published, who um, uh, part, we're part of the same family. Uh, he's like the lead uh, medical director for Stay Healthy. And, you know, he's been doing what he does in the world of cancer for over 30 years. Yeah. Professor at UCLA. I mean, this guy's done it all. And so every week, you know, I get to sit down with him for like two three hours and pick his, his brain and it's just mind blowing to me that people aren't aware of excess fat and how it plays a role in the increased likeliness that you will attract some type of cancer. 
Yeah, and you know what? We, that's a part that we don't know. Like I said, I had doctors and surgeons and everybody else looking after me through this whole experience and not one, not one person, including my doctor and my physician, my surgeons, told me that this could be related. Now, I was tiny at the time because I'd lost so much weight because of the cancer, but they never ever, they never mentioned that. And so when I heard that, I'm going like, oh my gosh, it, that became a new mission for me. Like when I heard that piece and nobody else knows about it, then people need to know. That it's well, not only well. the fat you're carrying that's visible, but the other fat that's inside that you can't see, you got two layers of danger there. And if you can physically see the fat on you, you have to understand that that could, that you could be in serious trouble and not even know it. It's not just about diabetes anymore. It's just not about, you know, the, all the other related diseases that are carrying fat. To me, it's personal now. It's like, it's personal because if you can prevent breast cancer by taking off excess weight, sign me up. Okay, well, let's, I'm, let's, I'm, let's get them behind you. Let's, let's sign up. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to share something with you that may blow your mind. You ready? I'm ready because you're blowing my mind already. So go ahead. <laughs> And then we're going to come back to excess fat, you guys. And for those who are listening, we're going to give some tips and et cetera. And you yeah. can always reach out. We provide the link where you can connect with Trish, uh, find out about, you know, how to be part of our, our groups that are free, as well as yeah. how you can enlist the services of Trish as a private coach. Excellent. Uh, yeah. But I, what I wanted to share with you, and then we'll go back to excess fat and cancer. And also, I want to make a statement about Susan G. Komen. Um, yes. In there. And I don't know if you heard me talk about that, but. Yeah. I did, I'll, yeah. I'll let the, uh, some worms out of the can, baby. Uh, yep. <laughs> let's, let's open the can. Let's just start it. <laughs> but UCLA, the off. UCLA did a study. So when you have a BMI, body mass index, yeah. uh, the BMI has numbers, right? So once you get a number, then that number tells you if you're at normal weight, like the average of the population, or if you have excess fat, and they'll call you overweight or obese, right? Right. Well, UCLA did a study based on BMI, and they did a comparison to the DEXA scan, which is a way to see all the fat you have inside your body. And then we can look at really how much of your body weight is fat weight and where the fat is accumulated. So oh, it's an extremely accurate way of knowing what your body fat is in comparison to the BMI, which is like they get your height, uh, they get your weight. They put in a basic formula and then they tell you if you're overweight or uh, yeah overweight, right it's like the education system don't get me started on that <laughs> yeah, well well in this study and most people are not aware of this study uh, it definitely was suppressed but they discovered that as people get classified as obese or overweight according to the bmi 54 million people were misclassified that means oh. they, they were told that they were healthy, but based on the DEXA scan, they had excess fat and they weren't. Oh my gosh. And it also flipped. You had people who were told that they're healthy, but based on the BMI, but when they did the DEXA scan, they found out that we're talking millions of people had excess Ooh. fat and, were, and are not healthy. That's huge. I, that that's that impact right there. That should make people. You know, I got the hairs on the back of my neck just up because oh, and, that's and it gets better. It's crazy. So I am in the United States. We pay uh, premiums, our insurance. We pay like a monthly fee or annual fee. Yeah. On our health. So like mm -hmm. if you are at higher risk then insurance and life insurance, all those things is, is harder to get and it's more expensive. Wow. So when I turned 40 years old, my premiums, my health insurance premiums increased. Just because okay? you're 40. So the day before June 7, on June 17th, I paid one fee. On June 18th, I paid, <laughs> I paid Just because the, number, the numbers went up. <laughs> yes. And back to that company that I did work for, yeah. at one point I, was, I put together these programs for executives. Well, when I did that, I wasn't 40 yet. Well, once this happened, I was like, oh my goodness. So I appealed the increase with my premium. And I you had- You did, good I for you. Go, and I started helping other people and they actually paid me. Because when your insurance premiums go up, 
and you route and you take care of yourself or you don't, then what happens is I would put people on a program, get their body fat percentage down, which automatically help with their triglycerides, their cholesterol, like all the other data points uh, that kind of gives us a, a snapshot of their health. Yeah. And then you submit that as an appeal and then you get a waiver and they took me back to my previous expense. Um, wow. It has never gone up. That's so, crazy. Yes. So, and you know, it's the same as they're driving here in, in, uh, in Canada. We have the same thing, but for driving, if you can drive better, even though your, your postal code is what causes your premium to go up based on the same as that, based on your area, it's proven that a bunch of accidents happen in postal code, like your age, a bunch of things happen because of your age. Mm -hmm. And uh, we can appeal that. And there's no way we can't fight that. So it's interesting that you can uh, appeal it from that perspective. That's pretty cool. Right. Because remember the, if you follow the money, that's when you uncover the truth. Right. right? Because it was insurance companies in the States and lobbying around that, that made the BMI what it was or what it became. Yeah. Yeah. So it was all based yeah. on how can we reduce our risk yeah. on who we give insurance to based on mortality uh, potential. Yeah. And they looked at that BMI number and they would go, oh, if someone's BMI number is this, then that's a high risk, so charge them more because they're oh, to gosh. for someone with a better number. That's a horrible way to treat people. That's what that's goes like, on. You know, it's right like cookie, that's cookie cutter. Like you're, you're, you're square, you're going here, you're round, you're going there. And regardless of any other circumstances, that is a cheesy way of insurance. Yes, that's the way. It, it is what it is. So Canada, Canada, we don't that, pay for insurance here, so it's not the same way, but that is really bad. So if a person got rid of excess fat, mm -hmm. no matter who they are, if they're an adult, not only do you look better, yeah. but it improves your overall quality of life. Sure it does, yeah. And when it comes to cancer prevention, yep. which you're on a mission to help yep. women get rid of some excess fat. Yep. And if it's first, you know, or you know, they want to prevent first occurrence of, of uh, breast cancer or they're concerned with second occurrence yep. or possibly third. Yep. One thing that we can all do is we can all get rid of excess fat. Yeah, that is possible. hundred percent. Yep. And so you're doing that, right? And so people can reach out to you and what do you provide free orientations? What I do is there's a consultation. So I do, I ask them some general questions beforehand. So just some quick questions about where they're at. And then we have a conversation. And then based on that conversation, and uh, we've got two options for them to either have a consultation and a program, or we can get into deeper if they need it, you know, a little bit more handholding. And I can offer them a, a full eight week program that actually you walk them through eight weeks of that and get them to the other side. Some people don't need that real handholding. So there's a couple options again, I think it works really well, but getting people to funny thing is when people come to me, they're broken. Like I was, they really are broken. They're just thinking that they're going to go on another diet and this is the end all be all. And, uh, it, and they really, you know, come in like this. Right. And then right. when you say to them, you know what, let's just talk about where you're at and what you're doing. And, and then make a, I always say, make a wish list of all the food you ever wanted to eat and couldn't. And someone told you couldn't. And let's, and let's start with there. Then we break that down. It's pretty cool reaction when they, it's like a kid going like, oh, I can have candy. I can, I can have that. You know, the, the, the shackles and the chains come off and people get relaxed knowing that this is different. It sounds different. It feels different. There's something different about this approach. So they get on board really quickly with that, right? Nice. Okay. Yeah, it, it's really cool. Well, there you go, you guys. So you can reach out to Trish. So we have about five minutes, Trish. Okie dokie. Uh, where would you like to go, like, for the remainder of our time? Um, because, you know, we could give some tips on excess fat, you know, from yep. the basics of drinking more water, which helps. Yep. To body composition, which is yep. becoming more popular. Um, and we definitely should get back together uh, very soon. And I would say during the release of the Body Fat Index, the BFI app. Yeah, yeah. That should be happening um, within the next 30 to 45 days. That's going to be crazy good. Yes. It's gonna I don't be have good. to say anything, but it's going to be crazy good. It's going to be like life changing. So and let's talk about the, that body, the body composition, because that is really where it, the root of it all is. Mm -hmm. 
the, when I understood what a body composition was, like I, I see all these things out there still where people are just talking about, you know, losing a couple of pounds and not, it just drives me nuts. But when you're, when you're talking about what is your body, con, like what does your body composition look like? And do you know what kind of fat for me, I have to know that I'm losing fat and not mass again. Cause I already lost that. And, and it took me a long time. To get and I'm glad you brought that up. So explain to those who are listening, because you mentioned muscle and bone, like that's part of mass. Yeah. You don't want to lose that. And as a cancer patient, mm -hmm. that that happens a lot. That's the majority of the weight they lose. That's why they don't look, they look weak, right? And that's kind of, right. Uh, talk about that a little bit. Like now that you really understand, because what if the doctors, when you first met them, uh, before you had any treatment with your cancer, what if yeah. they did your body fat percentage then, and then after chemo and losing all that weight, we do your body fat percentage? Because in the percentage, we can see oh, how much man. of your weight loss was muscle, bone, and water. That would have been crazy good, and that would have been very effective. But when you lose your body mass, so during cancer, and I was on one of those crazy, stupid diets, Axie Berry or whatever prior to that, so I was losing weight thinking it was the, this finally miracle thing actually worked for me. And, then, and I was, was that a diet? Was that a diet that they gave you? No, it was just a diet that I thought, you know, I had separated from my husband. I was, you know, living life and trying to look good and all that. So I went the stupid way that everybody else does. And it was a assy berry kind of a thing. And nothing ever worked for me before anyways, but this seemed to work. And the only, and this is really dangerous because I didn't know what, what I was losing, whether it was fat or body mass. I just know that I was losing weight. And I was looking good and feeling good. So cancer is a very silent thing. It doesn't make you feel sick. It doesn't make you look sick. But the weight loss, the rapid weight loss, is a key that there's something going on that shouldn't be. Mm. And so I didn't know that. Then I went for my first physical because I had already had that scheduled. And that's when the breast cancer was discovered. And I, had, uh, I, I, I wish they would have done the body mass you know, the, figured out what my what what was going on because I had stage four osteoporosis after that, which oh. means I knew I was losing body like bone. My muscles were very, um, uh, you know, when people's muscles kind of hang. Yeah, you like, had like major. Yeah, you really. I mean, my mom looked like that too. When you are frail and and the cancer is eating away at your body, it's going to attack your muscle, your mass first. That's where it's going to attack. So I lost lots of bone density. I lost lots of muscle. And I lost a lot of water. That's why I looked the way I did. I did eventually look sick in the end because that's what the cancer was doing. So if I had known, this is why body mass, body fat, fat index and body mass index is so important. If you don't know what you're losing and you're losing body mass, it's super dangerous. Now you're opening up a whole another can of worms that could affect your health and you're not looking after the fat. The fat's a danger. And if you're not losing the fat and you're losing your mass, you're causing a whole nother, creating a whole nother can of worms. It's really important that people understand that. And I think this thing that we're going to introduce is going to be a life changer. But for whatever people are doing out there, if you're not measuring it, your body, what you're losing in fat and mass and make sure that you're losing more fat and gaining more mass, then you're really doing yourself. You might as well just stop. But uh, that's where I start is let's take, the, I love the measurements. I love that piece. And people uh, are, seem to, it's different. People are never told that. The composition of your body, other than what you look like on the outside and how you feel, like I say, it's dangerous. I didn't know I was losing weight because I was sick. But then when I found out that bone density and stuff I had lost, that kind of opened my eyes. So this really fits in very well with why I, with the body mass, um, body fat index is going to be a life changer for a lot of people because it's not just what's going on out here it's what's in there you can't see and if you know you're not looking after what's going on there you know it's dangerous and you can't after this you can't fool yourself anymore you just can't but you have to understand that you're losing the fat to get healthy you're not losing the rest of your body mass mm -hmm. because that's dangerous really okay. dangerous uh, you know what it's uh, it's a total injustice yeah. It's extremely sad. Uh, there's people who are watching this, and they're still probably having a tough time kind of really capturing what we're talking about. Sure, they are, yeah. No one's, no one's talking about it. And when you go to your physician, at least my mom and those who are like my mom's age and older, yeah. whatever the physician says, that's kind of like, 
what goes. And they stick you on the scale and they go like that and they tell you what it is because that's what the doctor scales do. But holy schmoly, there's so much more missing in that information. And it's so unjust. You're right. It's an injustice for sure. I mean, it really is. And we have a world packed with dumbasses, as you've heard. Yeah, I like that. Because these guys and women, you know, are in a position of influence and they can inspire and help people and they're doing nothing. And mm -hmm. so, like, even with the company that you're with Moldair as a company yeah. and the products and the goal of, you know, getting people like access to the products that are clean and yeah. the fat shrinker product. I mean, that is a product, you know, that actually is proven to help shrink fat cells. It's evidence-based. You can't lie, but it's right. clinically proven. So, so if, I mean, so it shrinks fat cells mm -hmm. it, and increases body mass, which helps with osteoporosis. And in vitro, uh, and you know, with some some rats, they've seen that 3.4 grams of CLA contribute toward helping with the uh, helping to prevent the reoccurrence of breast cancer. Yeah, yay! That's called CLA, people. CLA. So I mean, when you have that, and I'm seeing how everything is in alignment, and now you're a coach, mm -hmm. in body composition. I mean. I see it. You you pulled it all, and you have this amazing story, yeah. uh, a miracle study. Any, I mean, uh, anytime someone has cancer, any cancer, and yeah. they make it through it, like my mom and my aunt. Uh, hey, I take my hat off to them. I mean, that's that's no easy task. No, it's not. You, you have done it, and it's like your story lines up. Everything lines up. It does. Yeah. So then, when I started taking the supplements, and then I I wanted something. Supplements made sense, but the methodology they were teaching around it like a diet i hated the word right off the bat and i thought i gotta find something else that works with this and then when i found the diet free life our partnership just made sense i was just i raised my hand go let's do this because that's what i was looking for in order to do everything i wanted to do and bring people in a full circle the supplements and the and the methodology works because that is the answer but you can't offer one and have gaps in the other so this is why this is so perfect. This is a perfect circle of, of uh, supplements and education and knowledge and understanding and principles that actually are evidence-based, clinically proven to work. I tried to punch holes in it, people, and I couldn't. And that's, <laughs> no, I could not. So that's why we're together today, because it makes sense. Well, trust me, I have been in the room with people who have attempted to punch um, holes in it. And, and I can't take credit uh, solely by myself, trust me. No. It's been uh, all the people who have gone through the methodology, staying in touch with those people, then they say, well, I like this, well, what about this? And then working with different physicians and just work, working with people in different scenarios over the years and even now, uh, we're constantly refining it so that it becomes even more simple for people to uh, engage and make it work for them. Because and people have to understand that they have, we all have our own beliefs and, and ideas around healthy and what we consider healthy. We all have opinions about that, but you have to understand that it's just an opinion. If you don't have something to back that up with, to determine that, and that's why I like this partnership is because we stay neutral in that case. We, we stay neutral, we educate, and we provide resources and tools and principles that are evidence-based and clinically proven to do that so that you can't, and there's still people out there, like I put a post the other day about my pizza being on my diet free life because who doesn't love pizza, right? And I got all kinds of people like, my soda and my chips and my popper are good on my diet free life too. And there's all kinds of stuff. I was laughing about going like, it sounds, that's what it sounds like to people that are just hearing, oh, I have a diet free life too. I eat, you know, all kinds of stuff, but they didn't understand what I was saying. And that's okay, but right? you're going to get that, right? And, but it's about the, it's about being able to have that. I am a food crazy nuts. I love food and the celebration of food. My family knows that I feed the masses when I can. So if I have to feed the masses and think about what's, what's good and then put a label on stuff, I would never cook for my family. My family knows that when they come to my house, I'm feeding them food. <laughs> and I'm feeding them food that's good for their body. And they are leaving full and sleepy and with leftovers, but I always say that 
let's put food in the category of freedom again, and let's learn how to celebrate it. And this whole methodology is a perfect way to do that. Because we have to learn this, food is what our body needs. Mm -hmm. we, have to, we have to tell it what it needs, not it tell us what it needs. Because if you're putting something in your mouth and it's someone saying, well, that's not very healthy. You know, well, who do you know? I know what my body needs and how, why, how, do you, how do you determine that's health, not healthy for me? Just because right. your beliefs. And I get it. Like people are very, because it's our own beliefs and their own opinions and it's grown that way and conditioned that way. But I, I believe that we need to celebrate food again because we're cultural related uh, community of people that love food. So why are we, why is the food the bad thing? And when it's the most important thing our body needs, we take food away from our body that's good for us, we're going to die anyway. Well, you know, you're, you're going to always have people, as you're saying, I'm just restating what you're saying, who are going to condemn certain types of foods. Um, mm -hmm. And that's why, that's one of the reasons why I've had a really tough time um, growing the, the brand or the popularity of Diet Free Life because it removes arguments. Right. But in order for people to get it, they have to take a moment, sit down, and listen. That's right. But those people aren't thinking like that because mm -hmm. they're so caught up in what they want to push on people yep. that they don't even understand how to meet someone where they are. If, no, if no. I, let's say if I, if I was going to like jump out and do a fitness workout, and I say, hey, come to the workout. And then I take you through a workout that's pretty like hard. Yeah. Now, let's say that you're in really good shape and you can embrace that. You're like, oh man, good workout. Well, what about the hundreds, if not thousands of people who show up too, but the workout's too intense for them? Yeah, that is so common. It's more common people know that they're, they're those, those, those are taught by people who are, teaching other people about they're not thinking about everybody no and, and i see they can't meet people where they're at they I really see, can't i see and it that's why people give up people yep. give up all the time because when i can't do that if that's what i'm going to do i'm not going to do it but we have to consider everything and, and what i'm doing on this 31 day challenge which is awesome is I'm, I'm going i'm showing them different exercises that would suit me i'm turning 58 this year so and uh, so suit me i'm not going to run a marathon <laughs> let's forget that but, I, but the different kind of things that, that could offer those things that if you want to, someone, someone said that they can't work out because their ankle is sore. So I suggested, well, there's all kinds of sit down exercise you need to work the upper body and you work your legs without using your feet. I mean, so that's meeting people where they're at, like where are you at and what, do you, what can you do and let's help you do that. And I love this community of people that do that because it is about that. It is about meeting people where they're at. Right. And it's Cultural food is amazing. I love sampling. I want to travel all the world and eat everything. And I can do that with this. How free is that? No, I mean, it's, it's, it's all good. It's just, yeah. this would be my tip to someone when it comes to fitness. If right. I did a hard workout, right, and I invited you, and I know that a lot of different people may see this workout, all I have to do to make it okay in my mind is to take 15 seconds before I do this hard workout and quickly show you how to do a workout based on where you are at that moment. Yes, and I love that about you when you do that, yeah. You know what I mean? And just take yeah. a moment and just with compassion, like total empathy. Yeah, say, hey, yeah. I know you probably showed up. If I cover any, you know what I mean? There's a two yeah. chance at this moment for you, hey, it's all good. If you can march in place as I jump up and hurt myself, then let's do it. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> That's what makes it fun and realistic. I think it's the realism that we're not all cookie cutter people is really where the gift of this program is. It's really meeting people where they are for food, from a cultural perspective, from a, from a movement perspective, and still helping them get to the point where they are losing fat and knowing they're losing fat and building mass again because there's a lot of people that are have holes in their mass, like I did, that can rebuild that through this and through the supplements that we offer so it is a fully rounded i was so excited when i partnered with you i just i couldn't wait i raised my hand going like let's do this because it made sense it was the piece that was missing for me and i'm having so much fun doing it okay so i have three questions for you this is rapid fire time okay okay, okay so after i ask these three questions again all the information about you is available yeah um, 
So I want you to answer these three questions. And when we are done, then I'm going to say goodbye. And, uh, and I'm already looking forward to our next live. Yeah, me too, me too. See, this is the way I get to spend time with this guy. So this is really cool. <laughs> you get him all the way. So number one, I've heard you say quite a few times that if you're going to get rid of excess fat, if you're looking at weight loss, you want to make sure you're, there's, there's a way to measure your success. Okay, can you share what you mean by that and how people can do it? Yeah, measuring your success is really knowing where you're starting from, where you need to go, and what you have to do in between that. And that involves a lot of things. It involves, first of all, learning properly how to pair your food together. And it also, the biggest thing is like taking your measurements, knowing what your, your weight is to begin with, and your measurements so you know how much body fat you're carrying, your percent body fat percentages, and your, your mass is. And then as we go along in the journey, there's points of time. We don't do it every day, not every day. We do it at a certain point in time that's key that then we do the same thing. We measure where you're at from your weight and the measurements to see how, where your success is. And not only are they learning the methodologies and doing that as far as the food pairing, that goes great and we're staying in touch and they're doing all the right things. It's about that piece there too, because that's where the success is. People get really excited when they know that the weight on the scale is not holding them hostage anymore. And they understand that the measurements that they're losing the right thing. So their success is measured by those things. Nice. Okay. And, and we're going to always be talking about that. So yeah, more yeah, information, yeah. go to the website, learn more about Trish, and you can learn more about that. Okay. Second question. Okay. As a nutritionist, as a health advocate, uh, mom, all of the things that you are. Grandma. Grandma. <laughs> what is your favorite food? Like if there was a go-to food that you like to eat that may not be the healthiest thing in the world or maybe is extremely healthy, what is your ideal food that you look forward to eating? You know what it is? It's, <laughs> it, is it is Texas barbecue. Ooh. Texas barbecue. We were in Dallas, Texas last year, and I ate my way through, te through Dallas. Like going to every barbecue, like I'm talking about pitmaster barbecue stuff mm. and uh the brisket and the because you know oh my god my mouth is watering like the beans that they cook and the biscuits and the all of that now if i was thinking is that healthy or not in my old mind i would think it wasn't because the sauce is probably fat the meat has got fat on it you can't make a brisket without fat people like come on a brisket you can't take the fat of the brisket sorry mm -hmm. but my favorite go-to food is is probably like barbecue texas barbecue pitmaster good yum stuff mm. now, have you ever had barbecue in memphis haven't had it in memphis but i heard that memphis is, is that where they have the white sauce is uh, there a white sure sauce that you use in, well i think it's alabama that uses the white sauce yeah, all i know is memphis say they are very um clear that they make the best barbecue in texas they're they say the same thing and in kansas city they're like look we make the best barbecue <laughs> well, I should do a cooking show that I travel across the country, and I'll show you which one's the best beef. But it is really, and it is different depending on the vinegar sauces and things like that. But smoked meat, like, come on, people, you okay. can't you can't do better than that. <laughs> All right. So, third and final question. Yeah. Uh, right now, we like we're always putting on challenges, but right now we have yeah. a challenge that's taking place, and it doesn't matter which challenge it would be. What are some words of wisdom that you can leave everybody with that will help them not only be engaged in the beginning when it's exciting, but see it through and just make it just part of who they are, truly make it part of their lifestyle. I think for the most part is just to get real with yourself, like really be uh, honest with yourself. Don't choose any, don't choose to jump in on anything when you don't have this right up here. There's so many people in the community in the group right now then that's what a group is for. A group of community of people are supposed to come together and help each other out. And I think we do a really good job that way. If you're going to enter the journey and enter the arena of a diet-free life methodology, then raise your hand. If you don't know, don't worry. If you don't know, we're going we're gonna to walk you through that. If you need to know, raise your hand. I want to encourage you that not, you never can do anything wrong. But we want to teach you how to do it right. So the purpose is to stay around long enough, one, to see the success, and try to, this 31 day challenge is perfect because it's only 31 days. 
and the methodology is there plus the exercise is there so why not take 30 30 days but stay the course and figure it out at the end to make sure don't leave halfway through like raise your hand you know let's do what we can to keep each other there because that's the proof if you can't stay around long enough to prove that it's actually working then then maybe that's the part to piece that's missing for you that you can't commit long enough but how can you leave this community it's a, a wonderful community of people that have coaches there and people that are just joining in that they're brand new other people that are returning but it's very encouraging so if you're going to join join for the right reasons stay for the long haul to figure it out and let's have a conversation at the end don't leave without having a conversation at the end because you don't know then where you're at if you have nothing to measure it by so let's have that conversation that's right well you're 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 amazing please continue to uh, do your lives and share information because it's very uplifting and I, and I believe that you are truly a treasure uh, add-on to the Diary for Life coaching staff. You know, uh, I'm excited about what we're going to be doing in the very near future and, uh, yeah, you know, just you. thank you. And uh, seriously, I would love to have you on uh, and to do something like this on a regular basis. I, I would love it too. You know me. I'm just yeah, all about this interweb thing. But this is where I get to hang out with you. So I, I'll do it anytime you want. <laughs> <laughs> but thanks for having me on. I thank you, you guys, for listening. And thanks for this guy right here because he's given me the piece of the puzzle that finally I'm able to deliver to you now a complete package. And it is awesome. All right. Thank you. You have a good day, okay? Okay. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye.